Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another Breakfast with Blaha, and today I'm having watermelon, and the only thing I've done to it is added a little bit of potassium salt. All right, and let's talk a little bit about the power look. And really this falls into what I call orc mode training, but uh, I've heard my friend Christian Thibodeau call it the power look. Uh, in fact, I, I believe he called it that in an article where he put my name in it from some conversations he and I had about uh, snatch grip high pulls with our clients. And he always points out the power look is, is about big traps, big neck, big yoke. So it's really just upper back, right? And we define upper back as things like the rear delt, the traps, all that stuff. Right, that's a big part of, of the power look. The same thing with forearms. Right, big forearms. Because look how small my wrists are. My wrists are tiny. I have like six inch wrists, by the way. I have to do a lot of work to build my forearms. And you guys see what that entails. Right, it, it changes throughout the year at different points. Uh, at different times. But there's a lot of work that's put into that. And so... Where do we come from with this term? Like, why is this considered a power look and, and why does it matter? Uh, for strength purposes, it's pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious. Big yoke, big forearms, what do you think? That guy can deadlift a lot of weight. Look a lot of serious grapplers. Look at serious grapplers and fighters. And you see that same thing oftentimes. You see a thick neck, thick traps, thick forearms. That is a look we identify with being a fighter. I mean, again, Mike Tyson. Go back to older movies. Remember Bolo Yoon from all those martial arts movies. We know that that is what a fighter looks like. We also know that's what a strong deadlifter looks like okay there is an association that you know that that is a different type of structure and strength and if you go back and not that i'm a bodybuilding fan but if you look at a bit of history because i've i've been in the iron game more than a couple decades you go back and look at say the golden era the 60s and they had a couple of different ways that they defined a look. As modern bodybuilding today is all just grotesque, right? It's about just being as grotesque as you can be. And that includes even supposed classic, whatever things they have. They don't look like classic bodybuilders. They look like slightly smaller versions of the grotesque IFBB pros with a slightly smaller gut. In other words, they just use less insulin. It's the only difference. It's just insulin-free bodybuilding. That's all it is. But you go back and you look at the classic thing, and they kind of had two different types of body types. You had, they called the Apollyon physique, which is what today... I don't even know today. My age is showing. I've been doing internet fitness so long that it may not even be called this anymore. The aesthetics bros. The aesthetics bras. Right? What do you guys think of? Wide shoulders. Small waist. They don't usually have big traps or big forearms. I'm not saying they didn't do any forearm training, but their forearms are not big. They're not chasing really thick forearms to have a 700 pound deadlift, all right or to to clean and press uh do continental press with an axle bar so the strong men do all right they're not training for that they want to be pretty which that's what i don't like that's the big part i don't like about that, that whole scene men, i don't think men should be pretty i don't think men should care about being pretty not saying you shouldn't care how you look. See, people confuse those two things when I say that. They're like, you're saying men shouldn't care how they look ever at all for any reason. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying men shouldn't, have, shouldn't look good. I'm like, I don't think men should be pretty. 
And if they are pretty, it just needs to be something that happened. We word it differently. Men shouldn't care about being pretty. And that's what the word aesthetic means. That's what it means. My opinion. And I think given the current state of masculinity in the world and the attack on masculinity, I think it's a valid opinion. I'm not saying men shouldn't look good. They, if they are so inclined. But the Apollyon look, that's what it was. It was cl classic aesthetics. And they referred to this stuff going back to Greek mythology, obviously. So as opposed to the Apollyon look, you had the Herculean look. Right? One of them wanted to look streamlined. That's the way they would describe it. Streamline. Streamline and lean. The Herculean look. By contrast, you wanted to look like Hercules. Well, what is Hercules? Hercules was strong. Hercules was the, you know, a demigod who was the strongest man on earth. Well, where do you get strength? From muscle. Muscle in the right places. You combine that with neural drive and neuromuscular efficiency, you get brutal levels of strength. Hercules had brutal levels of strength. So we think of that as you go back and look at the statues of Apollo versus Hercules. Hercules was thick, right? Hercules had blocky abs. Hercules had big traps, a thick neck, thick forearms. All right? He was a guy who was thick and solid and strong. Hercules looked like... <laughs> Like Mike Tyson, Hercules looked like a power lifter. Okay. This is what we mean by the power look. The power look that people are talking about is going back to the whole concept of Herculean versus Apollyon. And the difference is the Apollyon look, that classic look, Usually you don't look as much like you lift when you have clothes on. you got to be walking around basically naked. Or at least shirtless. For people to say, hey, that guy's really impressive. With the Herculean look, you can be wearing a t-shirt and when you're walking around, everyone knows. They can see your yoke and traps. They can see your forearms when you're in a t-shirt out in public. Even when you're more covered up. Those big, thick shoulders. They stand out even no matter what you're wearing. You can't hide the fact that you're jacked. Okay. And that's how most people are going to walk around. You're not going to be spending most of your life walking around shirtless unless you, you basically live at a beach and you're a lifeguard. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.